The problem we've found with atline and online analyzers is that the analyzer is only as good as its sample. And its sample is only as good as its sample transport system can make it. Bad samples make for bad data. Garbage in, garbage out. Hi, I'm Walt Boys, Editor-in-Chief of Control and ControlGlobal.com with another edition of Back to Basics for the Process Automation Media Network. This time we're going to talk about sampling sample transport systems, and the new Sampling Sensor Initiative, or NESI. A while back, I received an email from an automation practitioner who was having a great deal of trouble controlling his pH loop. He was interested in whether I thought that some kind of fuzzy logic or advanced control algorithm might work better than his standard PID controller. Well, we emailed back and forth, and he finally sent me a drawing of his loop pH was being measured downstream of a reactor vessel, while the injection point of chemical to control pH was upstream of the reactor vessel about 100 feet. The residence time in the reactor was about 10 minutes. Well, the answer, of course, was obvious. With a physical loop lag time of well over 10 minutes, assuming the reactor has plug mixing and no dead spots. If dead spots exist, of course, the lag time could be even longer. And of course, his controller couldn't function properly. What I advised the practitioner to do was to move the pH sample point to before the tank and add an inline motionless mixer between the injection point and the sample point. This is a simple example of how important sample location and sample transport are. Now, supposing you're working with a more complex analyzer, like a gas analyzer, and let's say that you have to pipe the gas 330 feet. That's 100 meters just to make it come out even. Now you have to worry about corrosion, plugging, gas transport lag time, the representative nature of the sample, and other issues. And that's before you even get to talk about how accurate the analyzer is itself. When you're designing an inline or atline analyzer station, you need to spend most of your time getting the sampling system right. So here's a basic checklist to work from. Make sure the sample is representative. Keep the sample line to the sensor short. Install bypasses around valves and sensors. Install corrosion monitoring where needed. And follow all the analyzer manufacturer's instructions for locating the analyzer and the sample system. Making sampling work better is the holy grail for analyzer engineers. Since it began nearly a decade ago, the new sampling sensor initiative, or NESI, has driven the move to modularize and miniaturize process sampling systems. Presently operating as an international ad hoc group under the guidance of the Center for Process Analytical Chemistry, or CPAC, at the University of Washington in Seattle, NESI started as a group of equipment manufacturers and operating companies. It now consists of over 250 people, including representatives from vendors such as ABB Analytical, Siemens, Fisher Rosemount, Swagelock, Parker Hannafin, and Circor, among others, and end user companies such as ExxonMobil, Chevron, Dow, and Eastman Chemical. The group initially sought to build on a standard for modular surface mount systems in the semiconductor industry. It was modified for use in the oil, chemical, and petrochemical industries by the SP76 Working Group of ISA, the International Society of Automation. In 2002, the resulting design became the basis for the international ANSI ISA 76.00.02 standard for sample flow control conditioning and analysis. This modular standard basically requires compliant sampling systems to consist of a series of close coupled one and a half inch square manifolds, each carrying one of the components fastened to the substrate with four hex or Allen wrench screws. Here's how Nessie works. The substrate provides the channels through which the samples flow and the mechanical platform on which sample system components, sensors, and analyzers are mounted. In Swagelock's MPC system, for example, the devices such as valves mount on substrate modules containing specialized channel and flow components. Other vendors produce similar systems, and the beauty of the Nessie system is that they are all like metal Legos. 
where all vendor sampling systems plug and play. The Nessie bus provides networked connectivity to components and sensors mounted on the substrate. The Sensor Actuator Manager, or SAM, is the interface between the Nessie bus and Ethernet. It enables process measurements with their validity codes to be seen by a distributed control system, or DCS, and it enables maintenance-related data to be viewed from remote locations. SAM also includes smart functionality for advanced diagnosis of system health. Remote control of the sample system, for example, valve switching, is also available via the NESI bus and SAM. NESI's potential savings were first quantified in 2000 by an ExxonMobil team which reported that plants switching to NESI could save 40% on their sample transport and conditioning system and eliminate the need for climate-controlled housings. It also projected a 35% savings by reducing sample volumes as well as carrying and purge fluids and by requiring less maintenance and support. Many other companies have replicated the ExxonMobil findings and the use of NESI components is spreading rapidly throughout the petrochemical industry. So, remember the basics of proper sample conditioning and sensor location and you'll have many fewer problems with your online and at-line analysis projects. This is Walt Boys for the Process Automation Media Network. Thanks for watching.